Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're gonna to take a look at combining two landscape meshes. So this is actually a question I saw on the forum, and I've seen it come up several times before. So regardless of how you get these meshes, if this is from ad location or imported files, something like that, it's, it's probably a never situation that you would have two pieces that directly perfectly align together at the edge and just merge perfectly. Um, we're gonna look at a couple different ways to go in and make these meshes line up uh, and ranging in simplicity from time consuming but not complex to maybe take a look at an extension. Let's check it out. All right, so when I'm talking about meshes, this is what I'm talking about. So right here we have, actually looks like some, some I don't know, wadded up pieces of paper or something, but these are actually landscapes. These are nice, nice big chunks of landscape. And each of these just, I have three copies. They're both made up of two meshes. So I have one mesh that goes here, one mesh that goes here. If you look right at the edge, you can kind of see where they don't quite overlap perfectly, but uh, you can tell by the bounding boxes that they are lapping past each other. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to view and turn on my hidden geometry. That's gonna give me, since I have this nice smoothed out space, this is gonna give me some real uh, geometry to interact with. Now, there's a couple different types of meshes you might get in here. This is what's called an ordered mesh. You can see, uh, if I look at it straight from above, it looks like I have just, you know, same, same size rectangles diagonally connected, uh, and that's what makes up the mesh, as opposed to a mesh where I have, you know, different, shapes, triangles, rectangles, whatever, just connecting geometry together to get a smoothing, smooth geometry. Uh, but in this ordered mesh, um, I can kind of see where the two overlap. I can see that the, it doesn't line up perfect, right? So the edge doesn't line up and then where they actually lap over each other, you can see one mesh, they kind of fight for which one's on top, you know, one over the other. In fact, we can, we can exaggerate this a little bit by, uh, Let's just put some colors on here. If I put two different colors, you can see real well that they're kind of rising above and below each other. So that's not ideal. I mean, depending what you're doing here, if you had, uh, you know, like terrain projected over this or something like that, you might not even notice that. But if what your goal is, is, I don't know, maybe, maybe you're excavating and need a, a measurement or something like that, or I'm turning this all into a solid for some reason, this setup's not ideal. Having these two pieces lap over each other aren't great. I would want to have these two pieces tied together. So we're gonna look at how to go about that. So the first thing like I said, these are two meshes. These are two separate pieces. So we're gonna get them to tie together. Uh, we're gonna do it two different ways. We're gonna do the first way, we're gonna start doing it by hand. I'll show you exactly how that works. It's not complicated, it's a little time consuming, but you'll see it. And then we'll uh, we'll take a look at an extension option as well. I know this is level up SketchUp where we stick in SketchUp and usually extensions kind of fall in the uh, beyond desktop, but I have no but, but that's what we're doing. So, <laughs> so there we go. All right, so if I look at these two, um, what I wanna do is I wanna get rid of some of the mesh. I don't want overlap. What I wanna do is create a situation where one ends and then I have the next one start. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click into this top one and I'm gonna do a select um, that comes up just shy of this line here. So it's like, kind of like that. All right, so I selected everything up below this line and then I'm just gonna hit delete. All right, so what, th what that created was a gap between the two, All right? So that looks, pretty good. And you can actually kind of see, this is, I mean, it, this is fairly close. These meshes are not too far off, but they are not perfect. Once I have that gap, I'm gonna select, and actually, you know what, here, here I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna get rid of these two over here. I'm gonna grab these two, cause I wanna do the same thing. So I'm just gonna option copy those over there. That way, for the next solution, uh, I'll start with the same, uh, on the same step. So once I have them both, I'm gonna select them, and I'm going to explode them. Now, we're gonna look at two different ways to, to get this uh, knitted together. First way, oh, some of you already knew this was coming, is to stitch. And by stitch, I mean draw a line between each of these points, just connecting the geometry together. Geometry, you guys know what I was talking about. Geometry 
together like this and this is it. This is called stitching and I have talked about before that uh, I tend to find this kind of soothing. This is, it's repetitive, it is not complicated, it is boring. Uh, so if you, if you, you know, if you're, if you're a real busy, busy person, you're busy designer getting stuff done, stitching might be an opportunity for you to just zen out, relax, be cool, that kind of thing. Um, so you can see it's not difficult, but this is, this is solid, uh, you know, this is solid intern work right here. This is not fun to do. This is not a great way to spend a lot of time. I'm not gonna do the whole thing. I'm gonna do a chunk. Once that's in there, you can grab my, grab the eraser, option, smooth all these edges I just created and there we go and then once I actually I'll shift erase this so it matches the other edges and now if I come in here to uh, view and turn my hidden geometry off that's all going to lock together just as smooth as the rest of it perfect um, that is one way to do that and like I said I don't know two, three minutes, a couple minutes of stitching would be get that all done. Um, I'm not gonna make you guys watch that, that's boring. That's not, that's not fun. So the other way I could do this is turn hidden geometry back on again, is gonna be to use the move command. So if I come into move and I have nothing highlighted, I can move over a point and click on that point and now that point is connected to my cursor. And now I can grab that point and I can bring it up and click it to uh, another existing point. Sometimes this gets a little finicky. I'll be honest. I've I've played with this and I've had the most uh, success for whatever reason when I do these meshes is grabbing it from the underside and trying to connect it together. I have zero clue why I struggle to do this from above, but it's fairly easy from below. But that's what happens. Sometimes you when you try to move points like this, you'll end up having to force it to move like in an X, Y, or Z. So on one of the colored axes, um, using the uh, arrow keys. So it's possible you'll hit something like that, but you can see it's, it's this, again, not difficult, but really, it's pretty simple. It's not, there's not, there's not, again, time consuming. Yeah, mind numbing, maybe a bit, but difficult, no, not difficult. Uh, it just takes a little bit. When you're done, the big difference, of course, is your order, right? You you have you still maintain that kind of ordered mesh, whereas over here I ended up with this odd section, and I actually jumped here and I I changed the direction of my diagonals, whereas this looks a little bit different. So you can see again, view hidden geometry. You can see those two pieces stitch up. Either way, it gets you this nice smoothness. But like I said, th and this is a fairly big plot of land too. Uh, not a ton of fun. So what about using an extension to do this? Let's hop over here. I'm going to explode these two just like I did before. So there's a couple of lofting tools out there. The One of my favorites is Curvaloft uh, from Fredo. Great way to go in and just fill this all in at once. What I need for Curvaloft to work though is an edge. I need an edge on both sides and then Curvaloft will stitch it together. So I don't have an edge here. So when I look at this mesh right now, this is so this this is an add location mesh. This was pulled in from add location. So when I double click on it, uh, I'm gonna actually go in view and turn on my hidden geometry. And now I'm gonna double triple click, excuse me, select it all. And if I go to soften smooth edges, um, I'm gonna turn off all smoothing. Additionally, I have to go up to entity info and turn all visibility on. So edges inside. So I'm just gonna grab one edge. It is smoothed, but it is also invisible. So to get it to come back, I have to select it, turn visibility on, and then unsoften and smooth it. Obviously, this isn't ideal. This is not what I want. So I'm gonna I'm gonna triple click both of them, and then I'm gonna re-smooth them so that those inside lines disappear, but I still have my outside edges. Because what I'm going to want to do now, I'm going to turn view, turn my hidden geometry off. I just need to tell it I'm going to have this edge and this edge loft together. And 
We've done several videos on Kerbaloft. If you guys haven't seen it, search our channel. There's a bunch of these, but I'm just gonna go in here to Fredo 6 Collection. I'm gonna go to Kerbaloft and I am going to Cur Loft by Spline. I'm gonna grab this edge and this edge. Hit do it. All right, and that creates a new surface connecting the two together. When it creates it, it creates it in its own group. So I'm gonna select it and explode it. That should join it all together. Triple click one last time, toggle soft and smooth on, and there we go. Now I have that in one piece. You saw how, saw how quick that goes. Uh, kind of a testament to, this is a perfect example of extensions. Yeah, there's a manual way to do it, but invest in an extension and you might uh, save yourself some carpal tunnel. Not too much clicking there, but there you go. A couple of quick and easy ways to take multiple trains and combine them into one. So hopefully that uh, is helpful to you. And uh, if you've ever run into this with imported meshes, I guess it doesn't have to be terrain. We use it, we, this, this example happened to come from terrain, but anytime you have flowing meshes that merge into each other, um, you could also do some stuff with intersect and that kind of thing. The problem with intersect, Tyson just did a video on intersect, which is awesome, showed how, how intersect with selection works. Um, if you have two meshes that literally cross over each other like that, works great for intersect. The problem with this is our two meshes, like we saw remember when we had color coded, they kind of lapped above and below each other. So intersect would have created some weirdness. It would have created a bunch of pieces where I'd have to go and I'd have to select and delete different chunks and pieces. It wouldn't have worked well. It wouldn't have been smooth. Uh, my connection would not have been good like that. So if, if I have meshes that cross over each other, perfect for intersect. If they're butting up against each other like that, uh, you got to go with something like lofting or a little bit of stitching. If you like that video, go ahead and click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. What I would love to see though is a comment. Let me know if you've run into something like this. Maybe you have a better way of going about this. Maybe there's a system that you've come up with that is even better. I would love to hear about it down in the comments below. Or if you've never run into this and there's a different situation you hit inside of SketchUp and you wanna get some advice on how to deal with it, let me know that too. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you wanna see. Thank you.